It's the Potter buff. Uh, that's all I gotta say. EG ran away with Haven, a 13 to seven scoreline, I believe. And although they were 0 2, uh, you know, before against good teams, maybe a crumb of worry happened. Uh, EG still pulled it off at the end, but. Dryad, I mean, there's so many people to hype up on EG. Every player on this roster completed their role so well. You know, Keen sees up, Thea yeah. smokes, but Lori's the one who bragged. Yeah, we, like you said, we got to see a little bit from everybody. And uh, one of the players that we highlighted early on was actually Keen talked about uh, how good they are and, and how constantly good they are when we get to see these game changers but also of course getting so much support from those initiators and specifically Lori uh, as, as we got to see constantly and that is what really allowed EG to go from you know a little bit of an advantage in the in the half to just really getting away with it at the very end but those pistols of course making it uh, the, the job a lot easier too. When you look at really good teams, one of the things that drives them to that level of success is a strong initiator. And that's how it kind of kicked off here. Like you mentioned, Lori was pivotal in EG's success, able to kind of lift them up a little bit when necessary. But we looked at it coming into the game, the duelist battle, Bunny B versus Keensey. How was that going to play out? Because we talked about how EG had struggled against strong duelists, and that was maybe their way to get into the game was to shut them down if Bunny B could pop off. And then you come to Haven, and we've seen other teams do this in Game Changers. Bunny B ends up saddled with the Rays. Bunny B plays Rays fine, but when you can compare Bunny B on Rays to Bunny B on Jet, that's where I have a bit of an issue. Bunny B on Jet is like number six among all of the Jets here, has the number one FKPR from closed qualifier into main event. When you look at Bunny B on Rays, middle of the pack across the board, every stat category, it feels like we were talking about in the green room, almost like she was a secondary sky, like the boom bot was another sky dog. It just overall didn't really work as fluidly as I would have liked to see it. And as a result, EG gets a little bit of an even better advantage as Keen is able to pop off early, gets the op in their hands, and then it's all over from there. And with this team of EG staying together in the core for now quite some time mm. you get to see those coordinate plays really coming through and again Lori is really the the highlight here and the support that she was giving constantly specifically to Kinsey I think at some point I was looking at the score and I saw Kinsey was I think how, how Kinsey ended up 19 and 10 with no assist because there, there was really no need the, the, Kinsey was just constantly getting set up and getting those kills and, and closing it out, closing the rounds exactly that way. Lori constantly allowing that to happen. And I think it's great because we highlighted Lori before that and we talked about how the experience of this player could really play out on this map. And, and we get to see it right away. That round 15 where Lori had a 3k on the sheriff just makes me believe that I can buy a sheriff and I can do that too, which nobody's <laughs> going to want to see. She popped off today. That experience showed she's the leader that this team needs to depend on. And really, they support each other. Like, it wasn't just one star. It's a galaxy full of talent. But it's not too late for WPT to come back. Game two, almost ready. Let's take a look once again at what map was selected. Um... Because, hey, EG ended up coming back despite being that 0-2 on Haven. Ascent will be up next. This is Wingman Patrol's pick. Um, Bach, is there something WPT can do to make their offenses go more smoothly? Because uh, it didn't work out so much on Haven. But I know these are two different maps, obviously. Yeah, I mean, Ascent could definitely go a little bit of a different direction. Uh, we saw them play against Complexity. And it was actually the map they lost. They lost that map 13 to 10 against Complexity and their attacking side for Wingman Patrol was not particularly smooth. On the flip side, EG's attack on the scent when they played against Shopify Rebellion was rock solid. It was their defense where they crumbled. They won up 8-4 in the first half against Shopify and then went into overtime and lost 16-14. Uh, that series could have gone a different direction had they been able to pick up that first map, but it doesn't end up being the case. So I look at these two teams and I think, okay, you, you kind of have polar opposites here. You have, you know, a team who is really good on attack and a team who maybe is a little bit clunky on attack. I do feel like in general, neither team is particularly 
proficient on Ascent. I think they're okay teams on Ascent. I don't think this is like a shutdown map for either one. So yes, there's some history here that makes you maybe lean in EG's favor and Lori's impact in map one certainly makes me believe that EG could find success here again. But it is a bit more coin tossy than maybe some of the other maps in these teams' pools. Oh, I feel like it has to be said, the, those two teams, they have already played Ascent uh, against each other before, and it was at 13-9, going the side of EG. So they already have a little bit of domination in it when it comes to it, and when it comes to really uh, the understanding against this wingman patrol. But there is absolutely a chance. Uh, one of the, the things that Stereobund was talking about on Twitter recently was uh, how they were getting revenge for some matches that they've lost before, specifically against Complexity that they were able to beat. And now there's, of course, a chance doing the same but now to EG. Yeah and Dryad as we wait for our teams to be ready it seems like just the entries of Wingman Patrol just needs a little bit more je ne sais quoi a little bit more oomph because you know you'd have Thea's smokes right at the door and then you kind of just got to walk in blind is this just going to have to come down to hit your shots forehead or like mm -hmm. how much more creativity does Wingman Patrol need against a team as star-studded as EG? It's, it's difficult, right? Because that, that creativity that you talk about, we don't really see much of it on Ascent. And it's difficult because this is a map that has been set by a specific meta, and maybe you see one change at max from the teams coming through when it comes to the agents. Maybe you see a chamber, as we've seen from other teams. But overall, it stays the same, so you, both of the teams are going to know what to expect, especially when it comes to, to this head-to-head -head that we talked about with Bunny Bee, uh, that it leaves you with a question what is going to be what is bunny b going to be playing here and how comfortable is the team in, in once again setting up bunny b for success to see if they can push us to that very much this should be a mirror match and unless, unless one of these teams decides to kind of take a take a big risk and push somebody into a new role i don't anticipate either one doing it at this point in the event although your tournament hopes are on the line the year basically on the line a trip to sao paulo yeah. and a chance to represent your region at the champs on the line if you're gonna make a risk or take a risk now might be that time but again it is very much like you said pretty vanilla this is a, a somewhat standard look from both teams and they both run the same setup so i don't expect any surprises here when we take a look at the agent comps which is where you'll see some of that creativity fly it should largely be very similar approaches from both teams so it really is going to kind of come down to who just executes it better and that's what it comes down to, how you play on the field, how you play on the day, because it's also lower quarters, so there is no second chances. And I'm hoping we get that mirror of Jets. Last time we did see Bunny be on the Jet on Ascent, and maybe that'll be something that could be easier to entry with uh, besides the raise. The only thing I can think of is Soto likes to KO. Um, EG yeah. haven't played too much KO in the last six maps that they've played, although I, I didn't see Ascent there. So maybe KO or just the initiator pick, Dryad, could be the only thing we could see different that, that's a really good point too because soto has been doing really good on this good on this initiator role uh in the open qualifier was the best sky and the best ko so when you have a map like ascent where you know you're gonna have a ko it, you i, I mean the, the the i feel like the stage is just set that way when you when you set up your ko for success you put it you, you position it towards catwalk constantly getting that information slowing down and, and playing around towards the site this way there's a big chance uh, that way for, for Wingman to, to find some success that way. But again, as we get to see the agent select, everything looks exactly as we expected them. And the, 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 the compositions, the creativity is going to depend more on the set place, maybe the players and the teams want to bring today. We talked about that that duelist matchup and how you know we're going to see Keensey and Bunny B potentially clash because of what has happened with this EG roster in the past when they face strong duelists and how that has been sort of their Achilles heel. This is a map that I feel like you're going to see a little bit more of an, uh, a push from Bunny B. In the match against uh, Complexity, Bunny B went 21-19 with 254 ACS on this map, even though it was a loss in comparison on the loss for EG to Shopify Rebellion. Keensey, 21 and 22, 201 ACS, kind of struggled in the first fights, five and four for first bloods, first deaths. So that could be a way for Wingman Patrol to try to get themselves back into the game. But I do really feel like my eyes are gonna be staring at Lori. What can Lori bring to the table after a very strong start in map one? Ooh, 
Well, my eyes are going to be on this game. It's match point for EG. We're heading into game two to find out, well, who's going to be moving on? Are we going to get a game three? Who is making the top four? Our game seems to be ready, so let's go and throw it over to Vansillian Potter. Thank you so much to our friends at the desk. Indeed, yes, the stage is set already in the second map. And as I like how Mark really box set that up, it's really going to be how are these duelists going to play against each other? We've seen some great shots coming out from Bunny B just that round before here, Potter. And this time around, can they continue this forward into this head-to-head -head duel against Kinsey over of EG? Yeah, and they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to, especially because this time around, EG, they're starting off on defense first on ascent. And... And the desk also touched on this as well. Last time around, it was a slow start. I believe it was only a four rounds on the defense. Mm. So certainly if you're EG, you want to be able to have a little bit of cushion going into the second half, especially being on the easier side of this map. But as I say that, they're reading this round correctly. Three defenders towards B while all five members are posturing here for some sort of a quick B hit. Just walk it out, Kinsey. Around the corner now. As women patrols oh, running no. for corners not checked. That's three kills, make that even four on a deadly crossfire setup. The read has been beautiful. And as Bart mentioned it too, what can Lori bring to the table? Three kills along with that as well. Yeah, no one clearing that corner. And you know, sometimes uh, usually there's a KO knife that 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 procs in the beginning of the round to just make the defenders second guess whether they want to push into B main or not, but WPT, they chose to go with the silent game. They wanted to be able to pounce. And they fully bought into only right two here. defenders being in right that here. area. But EG staying strong. And this Ares in the hands of Lori. Ah, this is a strong start. Got hit by the knife. Uh -oh. Already dashed forward. They and a surprise forward. attack. But Timmy the turret answers right back. A four versus four and that a four Shockdart. spy that Potter just mentioned. Shotgun does so much damage too. A starbound is down at six HP. Love the confidence coming in here. Bunny B swinging back hard. WPT, they don't want to oh stop. My. They're fighting right away, breaking the door, trying to surprise Pyrofixel, counting the bullets left in the chamber of that KO. But it's EG now still answering back. Clear advantage, dash away. Spot it, Rise off the dash, but Rise still gets the kill with the stingers. It hurts. A Starbound answers back with low HP still. Adding value to the round for EG. Recon Dart trying to get the spray potential through that paranoia that came out from the defense. Repositioning by Eevee. As we still have started, but in the back of the site. The Ares gets the kill. Advantage back coming forward for Women Patrol as they convert to the force by and tie the game instantly 1-1. One one. Oh boy. Vans, I was so tunnel visioned on the idea that Lori was just about to have a farm round that I didn't <laughs> catch the fact that WPT fully invested into this one and you saw that fearlessness coming through for Bunny B from the get-go just remaining. bobbing and weaving, dipping and diving, trying to dodge those Aries bullet spams and she does it. They're able to get past and just quickly pounce on Lori, who is in the middle of a reload. And that just completely opens up the site. Now, I mean, EG, they're working with scraps. Just three shorties on the board. They want to be able to have WPT just run into their stack. And you can see that they're stacking towards a site. But WPT, they're just going to slow this round down. Yeah. And just congratulate themselves for a solid <laughs> thrifty win. On top of that... A force by where they lost what? Did you see that knife, Vens? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we, yeah. They don't want to run into that problem <laughs> once again here. They do not want to run into potentially EG players pushing into B main there. Yeah, and especially with that instant Aljon right after clearing every single corner and even walking into the site just to make sure that they could trade perfectly now. Finally, the execution, Nord's been heard. The noise has been made towards the B side, not heard by EG, as they're still stacked towards this A site. Yeah, Ryze has got a Guardian, and the Guardian can be planted. really difficult when people are swarming. Oh, but that sound too. Oh, no. Now, 1v1 potential towards the door. Decides to pull back and keep the defenders. Towards the spawn, caught off guard. Unfortunate there. Smoke in hand. Loses the Guardian. Door still closed. Now the Swarm will ensue for EG. Yeah, if you're EG, you're completely fine with just containing him. You 
just want to contain. You want to keep them in the side and make everyone die to the spike. Get all the weaponry off the board. You can see that's exactly what they're sort of doing. Trying to do. A Soto. Util. It's this time Thea that has Util caught in her hands. Not able to trade off with her teammates. And it still ends up being all four players staying alive on a pulse plant. The Guardian spans are just too strong. It's just too strong. <laughs> I mean, the walls are paper thin when you have that weapon in your hands, so... Yeah. Falling, uh, falling victim to that. Second time's a charm, though, for if you're Lori. I mean, you've got a bigger weapon this time around. <laughs> and Odin. <laughs> and you can bet your dollar that she's going to be wary of a quick B pounce. But WPT, they're not slowing down this pace, Vans. All five members grouped towards A this time. The KO knife. Countered back though from the Four defenders. Players. That's right. So not too much util, but thankfully at least the smoke was up. Theo runs right in. It's a one for one. Power Pixel cannot trade that off. Fragment on the ground. Molly trying to get the spray, breaking the door instantly. After a reload, of course. The plant's gonna come down at least though for Wingman Patrol. A lot of utility here on the back of the initiators on EG side, and we just saw how successful they were on the Haven defense retakes. One more flash on the back of Power Pixel. You can see Lori wants to do a little bit of spam before this retake goes. It's going to be so difficult, though. He has an operator to help the team to retake the site with, so it's going to have to be the rest of EG trying to get the sprays through. First kill out for Star about a jump in the backstab from Power Pixels, and it's perfect in the end. The offs don't even need it. It's the other three players on a retake that allows EG to have such a clean retake in time of the game. This discipline is ever. And you saw it, right? I mean, Power yeah. Pixel kind of trolled you a little bit there, Vans, but <laughs> <laughs> they knew all along what they were doing. Just biding their time, getting that door a little bit weak, as weak as possible. And as soon as those rotators get in position, one enemy remains. Retake is on, and it's just smooth. Everyone doing their job. Everyone swinging if they need a swing. So if EG continue to have defensive retakes like that, that's just another strat in their book. Uh, that's just yeah. another option that they can lean into. And for Women Patrol, it's only one option. You keep holding that W. W actually yeah, doesn't set for Wingman. It's for the dash right in the site. Oh. The whole W right in there. But if he's already in a smoke just to try to cover the back of the generator, but Starbound still falls. A oh. flash and try to go for a surprise kill. Gets denied right away by Soto as we have a two-player advantage. A dash doesn't work out. But he means hops right out of the smoke and gets the kill. Answered right back by Lori as she picks up the up. What behind by Kinsey. A disadvantage though still for EG as they're down by two. And that's going to slow things down for a bit. Maybe for EG, they just want to save this up. Now, Lori was thinking about it. But, man, just round two for both sides here. If you're WPT, you know someone on that squad was like, y'all want to rush A again? <laughs> and it just <laughs> works out hugely for them. Strong side of the map for EG was B there. They didn't choose to play anyone in mid, so that even slowed down the rotates even more. Both players on the defense side of EG were on an island in this round, and WPT completely chose the correct site. Even that knife, oh, trying to hunt down for those kills, but we still see those weapons for EG. So a knop in the Vandal, still allowing this buy to come out for EG. Hey, a WPT Vans, they've got a KO ultimate and an Ol Olman ultimate with the knives online this round. If, if, no, if there's ever a W key round, this is another one coming through. <laughs> At least this time around, though, Power Pixel staying all the way back towards Hell. So they could actually maybe counter out with the knife off the KO ult. Already a dash in. Power Pixel gets that first kill onto Soto. So no ults coming through because of that zero point that was thrown out earlier. But if he's trying to create that space, answers right back with that stinger. Phantom now picked up. Upshot miss coming out from the defense. Paranoia and a recon dart. Nobody breaking a dart, but at least we stay alive on the plat now. That still has to go down for Women Patrol. Instantly, a lockdown comes out. Adrian tries to respond, tries to do something about it, and the trades come through, but EG are just faster. All three members towards here, and sure, Ryze is going to be able to get the spike down, but no utility. 20 seconds still left for any sort of smoke. 
Maybe Ryze can be some sort of crazy TP play to really mess with EG's timings. But they're so grouped. Oh, this dip into the oh, smoke. Oh, the timing's perfect. Made it through towards spawn. King the C's defenders. Aware, yeah. The others. Oh, and we're even flanking towards the back. I mean, all that was being checked there by Thea as they were walking back in. Nice attempt, but in the end, a great hold by EG. And it started off so well with that first trade off that we had towards that A site, but that. It did. Extra four seconds to get that locked down really for the plans that WPT had on the on the attempt to plant. Yeah, and not to mention Soto's ultimate never came through, right? And, and it was yeah. a good catch that you mentioned, Dan. The fact that the zero point on EG's side stopped them from being able to pop prop that, but Soto had a lot of time from the beginning of the round. Right? I believe two or three seconds to just rip it off the rip, uh, but unfortunately chose the wrong side. And WPT, they're not going to change. All right, five man. members once again. <laughs> They're choosing B site here this time, though. Yeah. We're going to have a really quick first half now as oh, Women Patrol oh, finally decides to use a KO right away. So that's no Nano Swarms. Actually, the Nano Swarms across the site. Killjoy's playing towards the A site. So oh, that's going to bring a lot of value on the three players stacked inside the site for EG. Already a first kill as Soto falls. Technically, you should being run. the camera right now, trying to find the information for their teammates, oh, will get oh, resurrected oh, here by Bunny B. Hunter's Fury out from the back of the site. Lockdown oh coming boy. through as that will get stopped. And EG still answers back. Couple of shots ring through the walls. So it's not able to at least cross the line of scrimmage for One enemy Wingman remaining. Patrol. And Spike finally, as B. we're clicking to the last player, Avery with the Noden. Well, we're not. Oh, yeah. I mean, got some value out of that. <laughs> got that pick there on the Thea. <laughs> but yeah, Avery just trying to survive at this point. EG, you can see they want to play as disciplined as ever. Not going to give any sort of opportunities. The spike is down. There's 30 seconds. <sighs> Avery quickly checking seconds their left. flank. But at this point, EG, they, they got to... Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. At least Power Pixels there from spawn. <laughs> It was a chance. It was a chance. We're, we're going into like the, yeah, nice try. We'll see what we can do with the Odin in the next round. But there was, there was a chance right there. Yeah, absolutely a chance for sure. We'll see if uh, WPT decide to slow things down this time around. Uh, I think this is it. This is the round where they decide, hey, you know what, guys? May let's default. This time, <laughs> you can see a little bit of a spread in the beginning of the rounds. Not all five members grouped up as they have been. Yeah. Let's see if that changes anything for them as Starbound tries to maintain that B control. But WPT, I like this bluff. Yeah. A lot yeah. of pressure towards B. It took eight rounds for them to run a default, a fake towards the B site, but Power Pixel still waiting towards the tree site. Thankfully, though, Buddy B still gets an entry. But then the ping comes out from the recon dart, even it up on a four versus four, a trade off towards the A side, an opportunity for Whitman Patrol to plant for a main, and even Soto falling back to assist their teammates in the pulse plant. Shadows traveling. Three versus three. And Soto has so much control, giving a lot of confidence for Avery and Rise here to just maintain and hold their ground. Full set of utility oh. still for Avery, so yeah, Rise should feel very comfortable. Drone should be coming up here pretty soon. Already coming oh. out towards the A main, only to spot Rise falling from the daggers of Kinsey. Recon dart that into the site. We know now that the Soba is on the left oh, side being no. pushed down. A right click right into the knees. It wasn't an arrow this time around, but it's still the round for EG. Wait. Oh. Fine. It's fine. Okay, okay. It's fine. it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I was still. I was. I was hung up on that music. I mean, that finisher is baller. <laughs> it's pretty baller. I. Uh, I felt pretty good listening to that <laughs> on stage. But <laughs> as we take a timeout, we do have to digest that round a little bit, Vans, because yep. that, that should have been. As I was saying, I mean, if you're WPT, you felt really confident. You felt yeah. really comfortable in that post and. I gotta say that that might be what bit them in the booty here because they they looked a little too comfortable, right? <laughs> I mean, that drone for Avery should have come out two seconds Earlier, before that. Yeah. Soto should have realized that ain't nobody flanking. Maybe I should flank Cat a little bit sooner. And they should have really been able to solidify that post plant for themselves. But 
They got to be slapping themselves on the knee there a little bit. But again, reinforcing that that was a W round is going to be important for them in this timeout. Yeah. And even Rise threw a perfect paranoia on that pulse plant situation when she heard that Aldron coming out from Lori. So there was an opportunity to delay and move the pieces. The rest of her teammates around the map to really solidify better crossfires on that pulse plant. It was when it was planning for Cat and for Long. So agreed. You're going to have to calm things down for a bit because you went eight rounds in a row on full rushes. A perfect fake in round number uh, in round number eight on top of that, rather. And then couldn't win that pulse plant in the end when you fooled your opponents with all these conditionings that you did for those seven rounds previously and not eight. That said, though, and might be something very similar this time around off the timeout. Two players working out towards the B main. But the Jets also towards A for Women Patrol. Yeah, potentially another fake opportunity here. See that Rise has the ult in her back pocket and the spike is going towards A. A lot of insurance plans for WPT coming into this one. Depending on how successful Solo and Starry Bun are towards this B site, Rise can certainly meet up with them as soon as she wants, but EG, they've been leading the rounds very well on this defense so far. WPT have been choosing the wrong size, and that's just a dry swing. Yeah. That is not good enough if you want to get past Keen C here. You gotta give props to Power Pixel and the amount of value they've been getting towards the zero points every single time. That wide swing, no dash activated because of that as well. Easy kills for Kinsey and continue to solidify the defensive side of EG. Yeah, if you're Keen C, you just say, give me those all day, baby. I'll take them. <laughs> Starry Bun doesn't see a soul towards B. And at this point, out. double back side left. or retake B. These are the only two options that are going through her mind right now. Oh, I destroyed. like this spawn push, but that turret placement is so clever for EG. Ooh. Paranoia is good, though. The three players are now flooding inside the site. Trying to maintain the last two players on the defense, at least behind B. And I don't even need wow. the rest of the support. Crossfire perfect for two kills right there. Rise solo on a five versus one. Spike at least is down. And that's all they're going to get. Disciplined. Disciplined and textbook coming out here for EG. I mean, both players Ball feeling very comfortable backside. And as you say, Vans, that paranoia gave them all the time in the world to take whatever duel they had chose. So, mm -hmm. beautiful reactions coming out here for EG. And... For WPT, you got to start asking yourself, are rushes aren't working, even in the post plant, are retakes, or rather, EG's retakes are too strong. you got to be able to waste a little bit of this util before we hit these sites. And yeah. I know that defaulting isn't the name of the game for them, at least so far. <laughs> but Ascent, you know, Saribun talked about how pivotal Rise has been in the mid-rounding department calling out those communications and ascent i mean it's the perfect playground to be able to utilize that skill set so for wpt hopefully this round this time around they're able to sort of default things out sort of buy enough time for rise to be able to use her ultimate game. and if you're eg i mean everything's been working you've got three ultimates in your back pocket you've been re reading all these rushes yeah even the zero point at the beginning of the round caught two players and yet Women Patrol still wants to initiate and engage towards this A site. Offshot, one of those Fight rare planted. misses coming out from Kinsey, the second map over for EG. So that allows the plant to come down for Women Patrol, but here comes the cavalry to support. Odin oh, long range, no. traded off here at this point. Delays coming through at least, but the lockdown now comes out on the defense. Wait, wait, Whoa. wait. Okay, good enough. <laughs> Disadvantage now, two players retain as they're both stuck in one at least. That's confirmation because of the radius that you had for the lockdown. And EG still comes back for another retake on this map of Ascent. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, that's just kind of the name of the game right now for this uh, attack side for WPT is no matter which direction they go, EG, they've got a protocol, they've got an answer, and they're ready and willing and waiting for it, so... Our pixel again, biding her time, and that's just... She's getting spammed. <laughs> and it's almost been the name of the game for that first map as well between these two teams. We saw a lot of back and forth when we actually had 
the defensive half being played here by Women Patrol, but uh, as soon as they took the attack, it was EG's name all along. Thankfully, we might be in those scenarios where we might be able to answer back this time around, but nope, not until Kinsey gets a shot like that. Oh, Even boy. close range with a shorter, which are styling it around the map now. Trying to get the close range two dashes away, but finally rises, punishes the kill. But once again, she's by her lonesome on a three versus one this time around. The dynamic duo in Power Pixel and Keen C. Oh, Rise. The Stinger. That's a bit of damage. Yeah, just unfortunately a Stinger. But what a solid hold coming through. Yeah. Power Pixel also getting res. Back to party again. There you One go. Flash. Back pocket. Ah. I'm gonna jinx it here, Vans. There's no way. <laughs> but at least you finished that kill up on Catwalk. Still walks back here to look for another she engagement a and a spike. Yeah, she could get a gun and she also has a spike. Wait so an opportunity minute. to pivot back towards this B site. The and thing this is, is though, deja vu. Yeah. I mean, this is this is round two for Ryan to be able to kind of redeem herself in a 1v3 post. Last time around, she pushed up into spawn and the jig was left. up. EG completely was aware. Look at the rotation time as well, as yeah. well, fans. They're so far away. And out of range from all that Killjoy utility, so there was never any information that for EG. They all thought that Ryze was just saving that gun the whole time. But with all of this time that's in her hands, Ryze is staying in the back of the site. She Maybe try to play mind games. Flash wasted as the door has been closed. Ryze looking for that smoke, and the last time was able to move towards the spawn, this time towards the back of the site. EG gambles, reads through this, pushing three players in the back of the site. Oh boy. Ryze couldn't surprise any of them, unfortunately, and EG in the end still gets the round. Opportunities. Certainly opportunities, but EG are so comfortable playing these retakes, staying within themselves, and just the making sure their spacing is correct. Beautifully straightforward, and the start of this, I mean, things look a little bit dicey. But again, that, that dynamic duo in Power Pixel and Keen C, they're just so Time strong. Up. Holding down the fort at A site. And here we go, Vans. Once again. <laughs> I mean, usually I'll say if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but it's not quite uh not not uh, broken, but it's at not. Least, quite at least broken getting either. into sight? At least getting into yeah, sight kind of works, yeah. you know? Yeah. She's running out of gas towards the end. But this time around, all of them are grouped towards the east side, but they don't want to go for an instant push. And through all of this, Pyropixel kept the knife the whole time. So just jumping, you see from this jump that you're doing here, you could see towards the front of that A site. And with the Aldrone heard here on the top of the box by Thea, that's when the knife comes out. Thea is about to farm this round. No one has had to clear the shroud box at all, all half yeah. long. No recon guard, oh, no spotted. nothing. Just got spotted, oh, but yeah, God. Thea still gets the two kills. Answer right back by Saribun, who opens it up. Put in a team on her back in a backpack to open up the eight site. Locked down on top of that, too. It's a safe spot here to even push those players back. Kinsey and Starbound. Oh, they now picked up. Wall bang on the Saribun. Kinsey said, don't you dare spam me. Don't you dare. <laughs> Got a lot the of confidence for Starbun because of this turret, but all yeah. baited. That was a nice move, though. Yeah. I mean, I think Keensey getting detained there just forced them to peek. Exactly. And now it has to clutch a two versus one. There is that first. Recon guard dashed through the smoke. Catch the last one. Right click misses. Shorty close range! No way! Comes back in for the headshot! And Keensey gets the Red Bull clutch. It's all good. If you've got Keensey on the board still alive and well, it's all good no matter what kind of shenanigans happens Switching in this sides. round. But you know, I gotta say, EG, they deserved it that round, right? I mean, Thea had such a duo round, perfect read, perfect positioning, beautiful transfer there to get it, but yeah, uh, things just, you know, it's Valorant. Things get a little <laughs> bit hairy sometimes you, when you go all in on the site. You're right. You needed Starry Bun to do that heroic play in the 3K to at least allow some sort of hope here for Wingman Patrol to get the plant and Kitsy closes it out. Top of the scoreboard, 15 and 5. Usually when I see EG and Ascent, I'm thinking about Kinsey with the op. Kinsey on defense. Kinsey on jet. That's been so dominant on this map continuously. But now the bears are coming up and looks like EG wants to do what Wingman Patrol has been doing. Five players down towards the gate side. A rush through. 
a dash across, a full back from the defenders, and now the swings are coming across for these trades. Good for two for two. A surprise attack from the top. Buddy be down to 13 HP. Door not closing. EG looking for the plant. Anything you can do, you can do better. EG sending a message to start strong. It's just a 3v3 though. They do yeah. get the spike down. Only two smokes on the back of Keen C. That should help them hold the control door. Starbound's oh. gotta hit some incredible shots and they do. And that's the bigger question. Oh, can no. EG's post plan be better than their opponents? So far so good. Starbound last player standing. Trying to get those right clicks. Only one bullet left. Forced to reload. Crossfire set up by Thea and Starbound. Turret now coming up to the tap on the spike. No swings coming across. Now the footsteps are heard at dice. The flick across. No shot. And well done here for EG. In the end, as mentioned before, EG can do the pulse plan better than wing the patrol. As they'll get this pistol, move up at 10. And Thea even gets a kill for her troubles. Dominant, dominant start in the second half here for EG. And this is looking like a dominant map overall in general for EG. You know, a lot of the fears coming in to Ascent was slower, a little bit sloppy defense, but it was their attack side for EG where they just looked phenomenal. So this pistol round setting a message certainly, and anti eco seen a lot of similarities at least from the start <laughs> of both attack calves eg deciding to really stick together kinsey doesn't want to slow down she's over it oh. it's 10 p.m and she they are done <laughs> <laughs> all right and uh, with 10 p.m nobody's breaking recon darts though as eg still flooding inside this b-site thankfully nobody's getting hit or punished through all of this oh, no. flash on their hand lori pushing through and now the players of wbt are falling towards that b-site we still have one more though out there in the open it's bunny b just by the switch the judge. Man. Oh, right back and that's all good for sure starbound with the last two kills eg at 11. Yeah, EG. <laughs> we'll see what they do about it with this bonus round. But so far, they're absolutely sending a message. I gotta say, message received. Message <laughs> has been received. I mean, Team C has had enough. And yep, uh, they're going for it. We'll see yep. what kind of utility Power Pixel uses to start with. 17 assists on the That's back it. of Power Pixel. Yeah, and I mean, they've been just a stud this whole time from yep. Haven now on to Ascent. That knife is going to give early information to King C for the pathing. Oh my in. God. Oh. Yeah, I mean, what can you do? Really, you saw it all unravel before our eyes here. We're trying to build that suspense, but you know it's going to go in favor of each, you know, no matter what. And I've got to give praise as well to Power Pixel because that last round that they've gotten to was the zero point that nullified all of that KJ utility. Now on the Pulse Plant, five versus two. You see the buy coming in here from Women Patrol, but it's been a buy that's been in shambles. A bonus round for EG. That's turning to, that's about to turn into a flawless. And finally, we have some sort of a cast of curse. As I call out the flawless, they don't get it for EG, but they still get series points. All good. Some things are right in this world. It's okay, Vince. It's okay. True. That True. is normally. All good. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this buy is not looking that dandy for WPT in this last round. Rise, thinking and tinkering with the buy, wondering what exactly they should be buying, but no ultimates on the board either. So this is all just going to be teamwork and uh, a lot yeah. of aim battles. Maybe some spams. It's Ares for potentially, I was going to say, Soto to push out there, trying to get some Vandal shots. But instead, regard we didn't go as fast this time around for EG. A little bit of uh, discipline coming through, but I think they want to just fake this B at this point. You can see that King C sticking around with one initiator towards this middle B main area. But the spike and the rest. Oh, sorry. Positioning. Oh, what a huge. The first burst in the shots on the second one. Trying to run away and oh, will be able to assist. do so. Nice assist there by Rise with the paranoia. But still EG are pushing back towards this B side. Trying to punish rotations. Recon oh, no. even misses the info. Oh, no. It's going to be a double swing in a side, isn't it? Plus the dart. The, the trajectory gives King C everything oh. they need to be able to find that pick. 
That is the B side down now. For WPT, at least they know that the spike is far, far away. Yeah. Smoke already comes down though, so those two players within the site still have to move forward and contain the B site. Works out for that kill onto Bunny B. One player still inside there. It's Soto with support from Rise. There is that first. It works out for a bit. The spike is down. Starbound going to work though. It's up to Starbun. Rotating the first kill that WPT was able to do here towards the A site now has to become a clutch situation for Starbun. The weapons laid on the ground. Nothing in our sights for the exception of the Sandal. Long range for the first kill, but then instantly traded out. And that will be evil geniuses who will continue to march on in the Valorant Game Changers. Beautiful. Uh, beautiful. And I think that last round, that last kill coming out for Keen C was kind of the name of the game, especially for this second map. Is It didn't really break a sweat. That was textbook. <laughs> Keen C just kind of peeking off the contact of their player back sight. So... This was EG looking prepped, looking yeah. thorough, and just looking like the better team through and through. Yeah, and, and Potter, you were mentioning here that, you know, EG is a team that wasn't breaking a sweat. I'm breaking a sweat right now, sitting right here <laughs> in the sauna of a room. I need my AC back. So, you know what? Let's just throw it back here to the desk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Christina. I needed that. I thank you, Potter. You. So let, let's, let's at least toss it back to the desk so that you can talk through and digest what happened throughout this series. Uh, thanks so much, Vance Dilly. Thanks for sharing um, your sweat story and Potter being the best duo ever from however far away she is. But hey, exciting end to the day. EG have done it. They've made top four. And man, in dominant fashion too. And alongside Complexity Version 1 and Shopify Rebellion, there's only two spots for North America to make that world championship. And Dryad, you can tell EG were having fun in this match. That first round was crazy. Even Potter had some funny reactions to what we saw. <laughs> Yeah, they, there's a lot going on, but EG, you can tell that, like you said, they were really having fun with it. it, it so many plays of, kind of I mean, I want to say hero plays, but that this is just the way that EG works. It. It's just the usual hero plays for them that, that really came through and allowed them those multi kills, those clutches right and left, and, and the dominance to make sure that the wingman patrol was never comfortable, not in the first map, not in the second. I mean, this is just an insane performance from Keensey, and this is what we were hoping we would get from this EG roster. Keensey ends up finishing, I think, 41 and 18 across Ooh. both maps. An impressive performance. 235 ACS in map one, but map two is where Keensey really came alive. 372 ACS, as you can see here on the board as well. Four first blunts here, but really it was just about overall volume of uh, production coming in from everyone on EG, but specifically Keensey. It was always going to be about the duelist fight what we were going to see from them and then also what were we going to get from lori keensey was crazy how do you keep track of this person <laughs> like just the different ways the different positions that they were sitting in ready for a lined up shot i remember in game one they were just sitting mid with an op they would sit in these close quarters with an op and would hit those shots even in the first round keensey is holding close as they're pushing site, just with a pistol, blowing them up. And as soon as that first round happened, I just knew Dryad. We, we, were, we had a game on our hands. But hey, we got that mirror jet matchup that we were hoping for. And Keensey proved that they were the top dog. But hey, we also had the impact of the initiators, Dryad, where we got to give a shout out to Power Pixel. Yeah, Power Pixel as well. You know, we talk about Keensey and how good Keensey was throughout, but it couldn't be done without Power Pixel. And I love the way that these two always work together. You can really, and, and we were talking about the KO and the value that the KO could bring on, on a map like this one. We really got to see it for Power Pixel setting up in a, in a lot of scenarios, also getting that in for, for Keensey to work with. And I know you were talking about Keensey too, and kind of when we felt like, yeah, it was going to be one of, it was going to be one of those games for Kinsey. I feel like it was like right at the end when Kinsey just goes in all the way backside, gets two kills with the judge like it was nothing. Like Kinsey just did that. Just like that. And it is always <laughs> what we see in game changes from them. You know, whenever you look at the initiators, I think people will look at the first two columns of the three slashes, the KD. They don't always look at the assists. Power Pixels there just to set things up. Kind of just as like I'll facilitate. Yeah. you take over and that's exactly what they did here and that's why this worked out so well for eg that's why kc was able to have the performance it was allowing their star players to shine sometimes you have to take a backseat as an initiator and play the setup role and there's nothing wrong with that 
you end up finishing with 18 assists in an individual map. I think there was 14 in the first map as well, 32 across the series. That's a metric that I think we need to put a little bit more emphasis on when we look at players who facilitate this initiator role. It's so easy to get wrapped up in the numbers game, but that's a great game from PowerPixel doing exactly what you want your initiators to do. And we talked about it before this game that every single person on EG did their role. They worked as a team. They have the chemistry. They pulled it off in swift fashion. They win 2-0. They move on to the lower semis. They make top four. And in a more one-sided way than we originally thought. So big congratulations to EG. The Potter buff coming in strong. And, uh, well... You guys might want to stay tuned for the Prime Gaming post-match highlights. If you miss the match, that's where you're going to catch all the best plays. And I'll be right back because I'll have an interview with Thea from EG to get their thoughts on the match. So I'll see you there. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm here, the Verizon post-match interview with no other than Thea from EG. Taking that W today, making this a quick night. Hello, so nice hi. to meet you. Hi. I feel like I have to say like, hi, I'm Jen when I meet new people. Hi, but Jen. Thank you so much for taking I'm the Melissa. time for the interview. Nice hi, to meet Melissa. You. Oh, we're tight like that. We have real names. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats on me. Uh, your team made top four. So close to getting to that world championship. Tell me what's going through your head. It's been it's, it's a long journey for you in the squad. Yeah, um, I'm just super proud of everyone for how we played today. I think we played our game. And uh, if we keep doing this, like I, I expect great things from us. So I'm really looking forward to playing again. We're all just super happy to be able to play another day. We, you expect great things. We saw great things. Y'all look like you were having so much fun. That first round was crazy. What did you think about your own performance on Omen today? You were slowing down so many pushes with those annoying smokes. You look like you had fun too. Thank you. Yeah, we were all having so much fun. I think that's, you know, just another thing of why we played so well, because we were all just having fun and vibing together. But yeah, I, I love Omen. He's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks fun. You make me think I can pick up Omen too. And I'm glad that you're happy today. Of course, you're playing tomorrow. What's the confidence like with the team? I know y'all want to go and celebrate, but what are you thinking about complexity tomorrow? Oh yeah, I think, like I said, if we just keep playing our game, we're going to do great. I think the only reason we've lost to teams so far is because um, we weren't playing our game. Uh, so I have high hopes for us and yeah, we're just going to take it day by day, match by match. If we win, we win. And I'll, I'll be very proud of my team no matter what happens. Oh, that's good. Through through loss, through wins, y'all stick together. That's what's important. And you take it win by win. That's what we love to see. Exactly. Do you have any special shout outs to someone on your team? Someone that like really clutched up today or any anything standing out? Everybody. Everybody. Lori, Starbound, <laughs> Power, Kinsey, Jovi, Fred, my assistant coach. They're, they're, everyone oh, stepped they're up. I'm bump. so proud of everybody. Um, I've just, yeah, I'm really happy and proud of every single person. We're all playing our roles perfectly together and communicating. We're just doing great and I'm really proud. 
You should be proud. It was so amazing to watch you today. And that's exactly what the desk said, word for word. Of they are doing their jobs. They make yes. Valorant look easy. And y'all were <laughs> playing your game and it showed. And you, you know, got creative with it too. So thank you so much for the interview and best of luck tomorrow. We'll be watching. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. And I bring back now Dryad and Bach. I'm pulling my little Steve Harvey on with like a different jacket. But there, I pulled them <laughs> in with the force. Dryad, she, you were right. She is just an absolute sweetheart, the nicest <laughs> person ever. <laughs> that was a great interview. And they're happy. I'm happy. Yeah, I was saying in the green room to them, and like, Thea is like the sweetest. Every time I get to hear an interview from her, I'm like, yes, we get to hear more yes. from Thea. Because you, you really get those vibes of the team, of everybody, you know, being passionate about what they do, really wanting to do more of that, wanting to play more Valorant, and wanting to be mm. the best. And, and we always get those vibes from EG. It's just so wholesome. I, you know, it, it blows me away too because I like take a walk down memory lane when I see Thea on camera. I met Thea in 2015 at a LAN event in Philly called Fragadelphia, and she's been coming to LANs and competing ever since then. So, like, I met her when she was like, yay high, and now she's only slightly taller. <laughs> but she, she looks exactly the same. It's so wild to me. Uh, but seeing her now reaching, like, the, the ultimate peak of her career and finding success here in Valorant is awesome. Uh, and I'm, I'm definitely going to be rooting for them, even though I'm technically not supposed to have favorites. But it's hard not to root for them. There's we just something tell. so wholesome You're not live. It's about okay. the, the, <laughs> the smile on her face and the way that team talks about each other, how they are so proud of each other and, and working together as a unit. It honestly kind of reminds me a little little bit of the guard in the way they talked about their team and how they approached the system as well. It's just cool to see them finally clicking and making things work. And it's about the friendships you make along the way through wins and losses, no matter what happens tomorrow. And what happens tomorrow is going to be big. But there was one winner today. The Aim Lab flick of the day. Dryad, bring me through this one because it was a banger. <laughs> Let's see what it is, that flick of the day. And of course, it had to be the player we were talking about, Kinsey. Uh, I mean, actually, you get two, technically. <laughs> one with the shorty as well, one with the blades. And just Kinsey. Again, and I feel like every event we say this with Kinsey, just doing Kinsey things, just another day for us. She's just jumping at people with a shorty. Like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Like, it's the flick of the day, but honestly, just chat of the day. And I love to yes. see that from UG. And like they said in the interview, if they play like this, who knows what their future may look like, World Championship or otherwise. And, uh, well, Bach, tomorrow's going to be a big day. We have the winner's final between version 1 and Shopify and Complexity versus EG in the lower semi. Oh, my God. today Tomorrow's going to be crazy. It's going to be hard to know that one of these teams teams is going to be sent home and we'll end up with just three teams left remaining and they're all fighting for a very limited opportunity to go to Sao Paulo. It's not like we've got five spots up for grabs. There's just two and version one's already taken one. So there's only one spot left remaining for these other teams and they are all vying for it, hoping that they can too punch their ticket to Sao Paulo and maybe have a Shopify Rebellion story. Version one as Cloud9, they were the favorite from NA last year. And it was Shopify Rebellion who ended up in the final. One of these teams trying to prove that there is more talent in the region. They want that opportunity in Brazil. And that fifty thousand prize pool, fifty thousand dollar prize pool is not too shabby either. Only two teams can represent North America. We have our top four decided. Version one: Shopify, Complexity, Evil Geniuses. That is the end of today's show. If you want to see the continuation of a Game Changers, how things are shaping up, you'll want to tune in tomorrow, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, and wherever you're from, drop a follow. It'll notify you when we go live, and we'll be looking forward to seeing you. Have a good night, everyone. I wish for the amazing new iPhone 15 Pro. <laughs> Sean. Do you mean this one, the one with titanium? Switch to Verizon. You can trade in any iPhone and get the new iPhone 15 Pro on them. <laughs> Trade in any iPhone in any condition for a new iPhone 15 Pro on us, only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings.